Hey everyone, uh, welcome to the Athenes Unholy Podcast. I'm Kyle. And I'm Mike. And uh, together we are going to bring you a podcast about everything League of Legends. It's going to be great. Going to be great. News, notes, pretty much anything, eh Mike? Yeah, anything that is revolving around the universe that is League of Legends, we're probably going to try to tap into that. So, so stuff like uh, we're going to be looking at different uh, champions, doing champion overlooks, uh, how they build, uh, the synergy of their builds. We'll be looking at upcoming champions. Uh, like for today, we're going to be looking at Aoshin later on. Yes, Aoshin. He's not the next champion coming out, but he is very interesting to look at. So Now we're heading to the champion rotations of the week. Uh, let's start with Ash the Frost Archer. My first experience with Ash was she was the first ADC I paid for, uh, Tristana being that free one I got through Facebook. Um, I haven't played a lot of Ash lately. Uh, I played her a lot when I first was starting as I was saving up my money. Um, but what do you think about Ash? Ash was the first ADC I ever got when I started playing about a year and a half ago. Uh, she was the second champion I ever bought a skin for. Actually, I think it was you that got gifted the skin to me. It was Wodash. Oh, that's right. Yeah, I did. Wodash. I did. Um, she is probably, and I know this is going to sound really weird next to Varus, is probably my favorite ADC. Mm-hmm. Um, her ability to play support as well as back up as an ADC, kind of what's it's what seals her in my mind anyways because she's such a versatile champion that you don't need to be stuck in a bottom lane with her you can kind of go from bottom to mid to top you can go support the other champions as is needed and still kind of hop down to the places where you need to be um her q of course Mm -hmm. one thing i always do with her is i will immediately get a mana moon air right away a lot of people Mm -hmm. say a lot of people say to me actually oh don't don't get a mana moon air don't get into themes there's no point in getting that but the thing with ash though this is what i find is that her sustain in the bottom lane depends a lot on her q and whether or not you can keep it on that's right with the mana moon a with your mana regen on it you're able to keep that q on the entire round Mm -hmm. and that will actually back your teammates up a lot more because that'll slow the enemy champion down. Yeah, I love Ash for the um, that slow that, and the range of that slow is amazing when she uh, puts on that multi shot kind of exactly. Yeah, no. and then and then that alt stun which slows targets near the target is just so good. Her alt is just it, it's kind of like. It's kind of like, I guess, an Ezreal's ult in the sense of you mm-hmm. get that satisfaction of firing oh, yeah. from halfway across the field and just watching it hit some errant champion. <laughs> from downtown. <laughs> I love that. Alright, so next is Warwick, the Blood Hunter. Uh, now, if anyone's been on the site or whatever, uh, if you look at Warwick's little avatar there... His champion he, card for the He's for got the some crazy hair. <laughs> it's... Got went to the went himself to the, got himself to the barber shop and uh, got himself a dye and a cut. Eh? And now he's fabulous, <laughs> hanging out with Tarek a bit too much. Just a little too much. Uh, Warwick, w- not much to say about him. I was good with him well, back in the day, like two years ago or whatever. Uh, I I kind of lost how to play him ever since uh, season two and then season three. So we'll see. Maybe maybe get back to him in season four. What do you what do you think about? Well, him? let's be honest. I've never played Warwick all that much. Um, he's always kind of been a champion for me. He, like I got him earlier on uh, when I was playing LOL. He's one of the first champions I ever bought. I actually at the request of another friend of ours, Stefan, who said buy Warwick. He's a great champion. Not my play style. I ended up actually refunding him with one of the refunds. Mm. Really stupid to re- re- refund mm. a 450, but I was new at the time, and I just yeah. didn't really understand what the refunds were all about. Didn't understand I only had a limited amount of them until I refunded them. But yeah. um, basically what I took from him is he's kind of a a tank jungler, I guess, in a sense. Yes. But uh, top lane I just I, I couldn't ever really get that synergy with him as, yeah. as a champion. Uh but all in all, I mean, I think he's a, I think he's a good champion. I've seen some people play him where they just wreck face with him. There are some fun builds with him where, you, like, you really boost his movement speed and then give him a frozen mallet, and and it can get really interesting when they're trying to run away with less than half health because your speed will just be off the charts. And before four fifty, he's not a bad champion to to kind of get no, as you start to advance your advance your palette a bit, I guess. Uh, up next, we're going up to uh, Trundle, the Troll King. Trundle, in my experience, I've only played him a few times, but he's always been one of those champions that's like, you get him, and when you get that really good build going with him, mm-hmm. he just cannot be stopped. Yeah, he is a monster, and I love him. Uh, I got him right after... I played him uh, as a free-to-play before his rework, and then actually purchased him after his rework, so unfortunately I don't have the original Trundle skin, but I don't really like that skin anyway. 
Um, Trundle, I love him. Uh, the one thing, I don't play him enough to fully understand him, but his ultimate can be quite annoying. Um, have you seen how it works? Yeah, how he's got, yeah. he gets that frost AoE going on and around And he starts, him. like, draining health from, like, the, uh, it, it can, it's, it's a potentially very damaging AoE if you let it go on long enough. It's one of those things yeah. that you don't quite realize, because of Nudu's, Nudu's ultimate is the one where it does that flash yeah. and that mass amount of damage. So, the two of them combined, I mean, I, I, I know where I've been in a position where I've gone up against a Trundle, and I think, not a big deal, because I know Trundle's not Nunu. Yeah. And then all of a sudden I found myself with half health because he's AP stacking. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, what do we got here next? Uh, next on the list we have got Karma, the Enlightened One. Ooh, Karma. Kyle likes Karma. I like Karma. I own the... <laughs> I own her, actually. I, uh, I, had, I had played her uh, free-to-play first, and uh, I liked her so much because of the... I am a support guy at yeah. heart. First, we're, we're, so I, yeah, we're both pretty support I mean, guys. She, she's just an amazing support champion. A lot of people don't think so. A lot of people don't see her the same value as like Janna or, mm -hmm. or other supports. But she's got her own value in that she can actually support an entire team at one time. I mean, you remember the one ARAM we had going on where I only had three kills and three deaths, yeah. but I also had 35 assists. Yeah. And our team was running in, and I'm just all shield. Yeah, and it's pretty awesome to have everyone get what like a thirty percent movement speed buff. Thirty percent movement speed buff on top of on top of the shield. And the shield also does AoE damage when you're by yeah. when you're by the champions. So which really does, which does score you some extra kills, like unknowingly, but you do get Oh, uh, I don't think I've actually ever scored an unknowingly. Well maybe. 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 <laughs> it would be unknowing. It's, it's, so. Yeah, it's unknowing, I guess. But I have gotten a few pot shots off of their Q before. Alright, uh next up on the list is Brand the Burning Vengeance. Uh, Kyle, another one of Kyle's favorites is Brand. Uh, my experience with Brand, I picked him up, and I didn't play him for a couple months, to be honest. And that was before ARAM came out. Um, but then when I finally got to Brand and realized he is ridiculously good in team fights because he's got that ground AOE, the alt. Well, what'd you say, Kyle? It's really interesting about Brand. I mean, this is this is kind of why I fell in love with Brand in, in the sense of like how you can fall in love with a champion. I mean. It's, <laughs> it's, well, okay. It's one of those things that's, um, he's a champion that just, he synergizes so well with his ability powers. Um, in the sense of Q, E, W, you get all that stuff down, you get it out in the right time, you can stun your opponent, get your conflagration on them, and by the time they're even allowed to run away from you, they're down to half health. Yeah, which is awesome. And they're still burning. And they're still burning. And chances are, and I've had this happen before, where in a match, they're running towards Garen, who's running towards me, and all i got to do is just alt him, and I get Garen at the same time. Yeah, just watching it go back and forth, back, back and, and forth, forth, and their health dwindling each Well, actually, time. Matt, one of, our, one of our friends that we play with, he, um, he recently got Brand, and he got an amazing ARAM kill. I don't think you were there. I don't think so. But, uh... Basically, we were just playing an ARAM match, going back and forth, and he kind of came and joined me. I was uh, I was just holding up the fort for our team, because mm -hmm. we had a Teemo who didn't know how to uh, play Teemo, which I ha find hard to believe. A Teemo but, who doesn't know how to Teemo. A Teemo who doesn't know how to Teemo. But here comes Matt, barreling up with Brand, and he gets his thing out. And, of course, the entire team at this point is, their enemy team's about half health, and he just tosses out his alt. <laughs> and all I watch is just them all start running away and it just bounce back and forth, back and forth, and he gets one kill, double kill, triple kill, quadra kill, and then he doesn't get the pento. Uh, psh. If I could count how many times I got quadras. Alright, uh, next up is Vayne the Night Hunter. Now, I, I'm a big fan of Vayne. I like all of, I like her kit. I like her passive, which gives her that movement speed boost when she is um, chasing down an opponent. I like her silver bolts. Um, the only thing I don't like is you have to get three shots off in a row for the silver bolts to do that extra damage. Um, but she's also got that knockback, um, which if aimed correctly into brush will pin a person in place. Love that. So it kind of works like Nautilus's anchor in a sense. Instead yes. of bringing her towards them, no, it actually pins them to the wall. Yeah, Poppy has something like that too, where if she tackles someone into the wall, they're stunned there for a little bit. Um... Yeah, and her alt, I've never been a big fan of her alt because I haven't been able to use it correctly. I know how it's supposed to be used because um, you get a huge movement uh, speed buff. Like, I think it's plus 50 or plus 80 or something insane. And every time you tumble, you'll become invisible for like a split few seconds, which is good for people who are trying to target you. 
Um, but I've never been able to use it correctly. Um, I'm planning on working on that. What about what about you with Vane? Uh, Tell me your stories with Vane. Well, you already know my stories with Vane is that I have absolutely none. Uh, <laughs> I have never played Vane. Not a day in my league career have I ever chosen Vane out of the free-to-plays. <laughs> simply because she's not a champion that interests me, and to be quite honest with you, she's annoyed me every time I go up against her, <laughs> and I am the kind of person that will not choose champions that annoy me. And I, I know that you would say, well, that's a good thing to I'm choose the a champion. Yeah, yeah, you would say, choose a champion that annoys you, because chances are, they annoy you because they're good. And you'll be good with them. Right? Because you'll be doing And if I felt that way about Teemo, I'd choose Teemo all the time, but I don't <laughs> give a shit about Teemo. <laughs> So really, vain moot point to me. Moving on to the next one, what do we got? We got Talon, the Blade Shadow. Talon is a really... I've never played him, but he's, he's, he's really interesting to me at the point that I do want to play him. Me too. Like, But, yeah. It's one of those things where I just <laughs> never get the chance to play him, and when I do, there's always a better champion or another champion I want to try. Exactly. I mean, this week is the first week where I actually own... Every champion on the list but Talon. So that gives me a perfect excuse or reason to actually start playing him. Um, he's got a very uh, annoying kit if he's got even one or two kills ahead of your team. Because um, he, he can just snowball so so well. Well, and that's that's how he's designed too, as an assassin. I mean, he's kind of, in the sense he's kind of like Katarina. I mean, the lore ties in there as well. But in the sense he's kind of like Katarina as, a, as an assassin. In that if Katarina gets ahead, it starts to snowball a bit. She'll just get more powerful and more yeah. powerful, and then eventually you're just, your team's going to be getting assaulted by a Katarina the same way that if you allow a Talon to snowball, that Talon's just going to steamroll you that entire match. Right. Uh, moving on here, let's get to Sejuani, the Winter's Wrath. Now, Mike, I don't have very much experience with Sejuani. Uh, when I think of her, I think of, like, Sejuani noodles. <laughs> uh, minus the eye, of course, but... Tell me a little bit about your experiences with Sejuani. Well, hold on, hold on. Before we start that, have you fought against Sejuani's? Yes. Tell me how those encounters went. Never will. How so? Um, she has got... I don't know, sorry, we had mentioned, we had talked about this before. She is the tank queen. Yes, she's a tanky queen. I and love her. you don't think that when you when you go against her for the first time. And I mean, it's 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 so weird because different people build her different ways. So you never yeah. really know what to expect walking into an encounter with Sejuani. Mm -hmm. um, you can guess by her kit what she's going to be, yeah. but she can be vastly surprising depending on her build. I've walked into a fight with Sejuani before thinking, oh, not a problem, I'll be able to steamroller. And I walk out of there with a mace sticking up my ass. <laughs> she can be very unforgiving. Um, like... I'm, it, if I get this all right, her Q is the dash. Uh, her W is her AOE mace, mace flail thingy. thing. Um, oh, for the life of me, I can't remember what her E is. But the alt, you can never forget, she tosses that giant like ice glaive or whatever it is, and anyone in the thing gets stunned. It's, it's just so good. Well, she's such a good gap closer is what she yeah. is. And I mean, for I mean, it might not... Uh, a seasoned veteran might appreciate it a bit more than somebody who's new to the game. Yeah. But even new players, once they kind of get that role going of how to play Sejuani, mm -hmm. they'll be able to close those gaps for their team and just completely take over. Yeah, our friend Adrian, uh, who doesn't get to play as much LOL as us because he's halfway across the world, he his first time playing Sejuani, he got a quadra kill. And he had never played Sejuani before. He was afraid to be the tank, and his first time did really well. I remember that, actually. We were on the same match there, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so let's move on to the next one. Is Lulu, the Fae Sorceress. I love this little Yordle. She is my favorite. I own one of her skins. I have the Fae Sorceress one, so I can turn enemy champions into cats. And, uh... Kyle, you just picked up the... Oh, I've had Lulu for a while. And, of course, us being such ARAM addicted people, we, we are... I don't get to play Lulu very often. I've I've, I've rolled her a few times, but uh, I actually just got her uh, dragon skin, her dragon trainer skin. Yeah, uh, that one looks pretty cool. Um, I actually haven't seen many people play it, so maybe that's why it's in. Um, it ties in with the rest, and they maybe released the bundle for a bunch of skins that we don't see that often. Well, it's, it's really interesting. We'll get to the bundles later. That's the, right. Like, yeah. yeah, we'll get we'll get to the bundles later in the podcast. So let's talk about Lulu, really quick. Uh, everything about Lulu is awesome. Uh, Glitter Lance, being able to shoot in two completely directions uh, is awesome. Being able to put picks onto an enemy champion and shoot off of that champion is 
insanely awesome. Now, here's one that works for you. When you put Pix on Lucian, what do you get? Pix on Lucian? I don't know. You get an insanely awesome ADC. Oh, because that's right. Lucian, yeah. Lucian can use his moves to dash, or every time he casts an ability, he actually gets that double fire. That's so right. With yeah. picks on him, he gets just that much more firepower. I've seen, I haven't seen that yet. Yeah. I, I saw it in one game, uh, only the one game, and it worked really well for him. And only because I was on the receiving end of Lucian and picks, and I thought to myself, my god, what did they do to him? <laughs> this I don't like this one bit. And it's always really fun when you're playing as Lulu. You're seeing your tank about to, let's say it's Zack, and he's charging up to go in. Jana puts a shield on Zack, and you put wild growth on Zack, and you see this giant blob just jump in and wreck their team. The, the, the wild growth from Lulu is just, it's the most hilarious thing in the world. Just because you can turn the most unsuspecting champion into this giant behemoth of a thing. Yep. Like, I remember playing, I was playing, a. Uh, I think it was Malphite. And uh, you know how much I love Malphite. Oh, he loves Malphite. And uh, you know, I love Malphite. <laughs> and uh, I was actually... Matt was Lulu. And uh, we were running in together to go charge at the enemies. And I said, all right, I'm going to ult in. I'm like, can you give me backup? He's like, not a problem. Wild growth space. So all you see is this giant tower and glacial Malphite just <laughs> rush across the battlefield and just beat everybody. I can picture a wild growth Malphite ulting in. That's scary. Yeah, uh, it's it's a very scary thing to see. Let's uh, put it that way. All right, uh, let's move on to the very last one, Aatrox the Darkened Blade. Um, we didn't know what a Darkened was until like he was released. Until we read his lore, yeah. <laughs> Although I love his lore, I love the champion. Uh, he had a, a difficult learning curve when I first started playing him. Uh, I think I'm the only one out of our group of friends who actually owns Aatrox. Yeah. Like, our entire group of friends. Yeah, you're the only one out of any of us to own Aatrox, simply yeah. because I did play him free-to-play, did not like him right. one bit. He is a, he's a very bruiser-type champion, but he's very specific in the way that you have to use his abilities a yeah. certain way. And if you, don't have, if you don't have attack speed and some lifesteal on him, he's really tough to play. Well, his passive is nice, at least. Oh, his passive is beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> the the ability to just... And even, even the opponents can tell when his passive's up. Um, they still can't do anything about it. There's nothing you can do if, their team, if the team's not damaged and Aatrox is. He gets pretty much... Uh, I think it goes a quarter to a third to half his health, I think. I'm not... Don't quote me on any of that, but yeah. Well, I mean, it's one of those things where it allows the team that's behind Aatrox to move up. Yes. And save him well, his passive up. Kind of like Ignivia. Like Ignivia. Yeah, Ignivia. Yeah. But, and I only say that because, little lone Easter egg here, might be well known by this point, but if you type in the chat window while you're an egg with Ignivia in your passive, it'll actually show up as Ignivia instead of Ignivia. It's pretty cool. But, uh, I mean, it's kind of, Aatrox's passive It's kind of similar to that, but it's, it's nice in the fact that you don't take damage. Yeah. And he's also untargetable. While he is regaining his Exactly. Life. So, while they can target you with uh, with marksman stuff, mm -hmm. they can't really do anything to you either way. <laughs> Alright, Mike, let's move on to our bundles and sales for September. And uh, we're going to be getting tackling our first bundle here. I just kind of wrote down a bunch of them. And uh, the first one is the Hear Me Dragons bundle. Hear Me Dragons. Hear Me Dragons. Now, I guess, kind of like how to train your dragon. Kind of. I. It has a dragon trainer in there. <laughs> it has a dragon trainer in there. We've got we've got a, an excellent list of champions here. Um, the pack is forty percent off to start. Mm -hmm. That twenty five sixty five RP if you own all the champions. Uh, Forty seven ninety one if you don't. But really good, really really good price point for the champions and skins involved. If you ask me. I think normally like without the deal, it's roughly like eight thousand RP. Probably, if not more. If not more. Of yeah. course, people with the MasterCards aren't complaining. Uh, anyways, <laughs> Americans. To, pick, to, to start off here, we've got uh, Shivana, Lulu, Wukong, and Vayne. Pretty good. I'd say, in my opinion, love all four of them. So you've only got four to your pack, but you get your Ice Drake skin with Shivana, which Looks is a relatively new skin. Really good. Came with the Lissandra... Uh, release. Yeah, really good skin though. I mean, it just looks amazing. Dragon Trainer Lulu, which introduces obviously replacing the uh, squirrel or the cat with the dragons. Yep. Um, and then we've got Dread Dragon Wukong. Jade Dragon Wukong. Mm -hmm. Say that five times fast. Don't make me. Uh, 
I'm really interested in, in Wukong out of all of these, just because, again, don't know how a monkey could be a jade dragon. <laughs> it was some Chinese thing, but it means to be said. And then we've got Dragon Slayer Vane, who, which is, let's, let's be funny, is, is kind of, let's be honest, sorry. It's kind of funny because she's the, really the, the one in this pack that stands out because you've got a dragon trainer in Ice Drake and then you've got your jade dragon. And meanwhile, Vane is the Dragon Slayer. I like it. I, that, to me, it's her best skin. I like Vane. Vane's other skins like Aristocat Vane. Oh, sorry, I do like Heartseeker Vane. But um, Dragon Slayer Vane is. Window like, loves who he pleases. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, yeah, but out of all those skins, um, Dragon Slayer is probably. But next to Ice Strike Siobhan are the two that I'd want. Uh, moving on, the next bundle we have is the Ninja Bashing Bundle at 50% off for 1642 RP. Uh, 3502 RP if you need the champions, and there are five in this bundle, and that is Fiddlesticks, Katarina, Swain, Rumble, and Tristana. Ooh. Ooh. So tell us a little bit about the skins here, Mike. All right, so the first one, we got Fiddle Me Timbers. Uh, I do like this one, but I feel like almost all of Fiddlesticks' skins are kind of gimmicky. Maybe, maybe the one that's not might be Spectral Fiddlesticks. Which, let's be honest, kind of looks the same as Spooky Gangplank. Exactly. It's just a white see-through skin of the same champion. Which can get really annoying. Uh, now, Bilgewater Katarina, you have this skin? I have this skin, and I also have her Mercenary skin. Now, what um, does the Bilgewater one look like? The Bilgewater one, well, what would you expect a pirate Katarina to look like? She has an eye patch over her scarred eye. Oh, okay. Um, typical Katarina style, midriff. Of right? course. Of course. Shows her belly. It's just what she does. But... Of the skins that she has, I would probably have to put Slay Ball is the best, Mercenary second best. Is there a referee, Katarina? Uh, there, I, at one point I believe there was, but it would have been... One. Like red card Katarina? Or yeah, something. it, it would have been, she. I remember I remember something about it, but it was before my time of playing Yeah, I think Katarina. it was before my time too. So, really, I, old, old skin, but um, <laughs> the Bilgewater Katarina skin is not a bad skin, but it's not a skin that I would be terribly interested in buying into a pack with. That's right. Uh, the next one's Bilgewater Swain. Uh, not a big fan of Swain. Don't really care about his skin. He's he's one of those champions, and I, we've, we've talked about this before, he's very specific to a playstyle, very specific. You can't play loose and fast with him. He's very, you get in there, you do what you have to do, you get out. Yeah, you burst and you leave. You can't, it's, he's one of those champions that if you play loose and fast with him, you're going to get burned. Yeah. And not my playstyle personally, I did not enjoy playing him, though his alt makes him look certified badass. <laughs> and speaking of getting burned, going to Bilge Rat Rumble, I do like this skin. I like most of Rumble's skins. Um, you gotta love Rumble, he's got, he's a very unique champion where he is also sort of an, a, he is an AP melee in, in, in sorts, but... He's got his flamethrower, he's got uh, a slow that he can shoot twice, and if he hits that second time, uh, the slow is even worse. And then his last, his ultimate is a very cool ranged shot that anyone standing in the damage, it's it's high damage too, and it's per second. Yeah, I don't really have too much experience with Rumble. I mean, I, I played him the one time, and I remember... I played him one time, and I had a chance to play him a second time, and I rolled him in ARAM, and you were playing with me. Yeah. The moment I rolled him, you're like, oh, you want to uh, maybe toss me a rumble there? And I said, who you got? And you're like, Soraka. And I'm like, done. <laughs> <laughs> For anyone who doesn't know, Kyle rocks Soraka. Star call, star call, star call. All right, and the last one on the list is Buccaneer Tristana. Once again, to me, nothing special. Again, Tristana is the champion that everybody gets... Yeah. When you like League of Legends on Facebook, I honestly never was interested in her, so I didn't even bother <laughs> liking the page because I didn't want to roll her at all. Yeah. Um, on to our next bundle here, and you're going to start seeing a bit of a pattern here. Pirate hunting bundle. Ooh. So I bet you can guess already what champions are going to be involved here. Take a guess. Take a guess. <laughs> Wild guess somewhere out there might involve ninjas. Uh, this pack is 50% off at 2325 RP or 4437 RP if you need the champions. We start off with the most powerful assassin, in my opinion, the most powerful assassin of all this bunch. Some would argue that it might be Akali, but I think it's Zed. So we've got Zed in the pack, Akali, Shen, Ramus, and Kennen. Gotta love this. Uh, Zed, I'm no good with him. You? What do you think? Played him once. Uh, 
did not steamroll with him. I was pretty much relegated to, how the heck do I play this guy? He's very technical. He he is quite a technical champion. He's he's just very. Again, he's one of those burst bursty champions, right? You got to yeah. get in, you got to get out. Uh, I know some people who play him really well, and those people typically will just steamroll with him yeah. when they play him well. Um, that's his uh, his Shockblade skin, obviously, is involved in this pack. Uh, it's a really good skin. We've also got the Silver Fang skin for Akali. Yes. Uh, not my favorite of hers. I think the Blood Moon Akali. I think Nurt. Does Akali have the Nurse Akali skin? She has. Well, it's Shen and Akali go hand in hand that way. Whereas Akali oh, has right. a Nurse Akali, and then yeah. Shen has Dr. Shen. Yeah. Which is, by the way, a badass skin. Yeah, there, yeah there, there's some better skins I could have done, and some other ones. So, uh, next one is Shen. Uh, there's the Blood Moon Shen skin. For the life of me, I cannot picture what the Blood Moon... Blood Moon I, honestly, can't I it. can't... In my head, cannot see it either. Um, however, I mean, people who like Shen... Obviously a good pack to buy into. If you're, if you're into the ninja thing, if you're into the assassin thing... Good pack to buy into. Um... Moving on, we've got the, uh, what's the next? The Ninja Ramus skin. Ninja Ramus, sorry. Yeah, a Teenage uh, Mutant Ninja Turtle right here. That, it's funny, because Ramus is not a ninja. By any means, he is not a... No, <laughs> not at all. But he is one of our favorite tanks. Uh, he has that um, rollout move, which is incredibly awesome to watch the speeds that Ramus can get up Especially, to. you had mentioned earlier, getting that... Getting that sustained and that uh, that attack speed, that movement speed in there. Oh yeah. You hit that rollout, you just charge right into the enemy, and you're opening up a lane right for your team. Yeah. The minute you hit someone, you pull out your taunt, and your whole team can just wail on someone who should be doing more damage. Exactly. Yeah. Good way to focus on people. Uh, again, his skin, an allude, kind of like a uh, an homage, if you will. That's it. Homage. Homage. To uh, to Teenage Mutant Ninja yes. Turtles, right? Uh, we all kind of grew up with it. Yeah. We all kind of love it. Yeah. I'm still waiting for a Shredder skin for Twitch. <laughs> yes, that has to come. <laughs> Just saying. Uh, or, next... Wait, you mean Master Splinter? Yes, That's Master it. Splinter. Thank you. All right. Uh, the last one on the list. We both love this skin. It is Arctic Ops Kennen. Kennen is one of those champions where, kind of like Shen, really annoying to be against, but when you're playing as him, unlimited possibilities. Yeah. A good Shen, uh, a good Shen, a good, Shenan. a good Kennen on your team. How'd that be for a combination, eh? Oh my god, can you imagine League of Legends fusion system? <laughs> Let's not talk about that. That could go forever. Uh, a good Kennen on your team, he will be able to just completely carry you. Yes. I mean, he is, he is just an amazing force to be reckoned with if you've got a good player. Yeah, I agree with that. Um, He's also, but he's one of those champions, day and night, right? If you, if he's not one of those champions that's very forgiving. He's, if you, if you're not good with him, he's not going to be very forgiving for you. So he's got that learning curve where if you don't practice, you won't get perfect. Exactly. So. All right, and the very last package we got here is the top lane tears at twenty five percent off, three thousand forty eight RP. This pack, no skins, just champions, and we have Aatrox, Jace, Garen, Darius, and Lee Sin. Now we've talked about two of these guys already, I believe. And so, what? what's your experience with Jace? Um, Jace, I only have my experience with Jace is really relegated really to just proximity. Um, I know that you and Matt both have Jace. That's right. And I was there the entire time. I remember I was, Jace, I think, was one of the, the second 6300 that uh, Matt ever bought. I believe so, yeah. And uh, you were actually training him how to play with Jace. I remember that. And... It was really interesting to kind of watch that that learning curve as as Matt continued to kind of grow into that role as Jason, where he is even now. Yeah, he's really good with Jason. And he, no, no, he's just amazing with Jace. But when he first started, like you could see just how hard that learning curve was to, yeah. to learn how to use the gates and to learn how how to use how to aim the shots, well, how to, to aim the them. shots, and then when to especially when to change from your from your cannon to your hammer. Oh yeah, that was one thing that um, I think Matt and I both struggled with at, at the very first was. You can the damage you can expel by just switching. Use all your moves, switch. You have three new moves fresh to go, and then by the time you're done with those moves, you you can switch back into range if they've gotten away from you. But they've got to be timed just oh, they, right. Yeah, it's, it's, he's he's a, he's a very fickle champion that way. But I think uh, in terms of like we're talking about the top lane terrors pack, so I'm I'm gauging this as in like if you're going to be in a top lane, this pack is the guys that you want. Yeah. Right. In, in terms of a top lane terror, I think Jace is a pretty formidable terror, oh, if you right. ask me. He's one of those guys you run into a top lane, you go, ah, oh, 
against Jace. Mm-hmm. It's kind of like when you run into Nasus or Renekton. Just, yeah. Oh, Renekton? Oh, Nasus? Kind of the same way with Jace. You can, you can picture uh, Aatrox versus a Jace up top. Jace can harass with the range. When Aatrox does this thing, they go in. Jace switches to Lee, knocks Aatrox back into his own tower, switches back to ranged, continues. Exactly, and it's just a back and forth game there. Speaking of Aatrox, though, we's all, we's also, we've also got him in the top lane terrorist pack. That's now, right. I know you bought Aatrox two weeks after he was released, when he dropped yep. down to 63. Yep. What's your impression of Aatrox? I like him as the top lane. Um, I like... You need to get uh, like a Vampiric Scepter to get some life steal. You have to get some attack speed, and then once you got those, you can go for damage or crit or tankiness. It it really depends on who you're up against, how you're doing. Um, I love him. I love his kit. He can he can jump over the jungle for escapes very well with his. I think it's his Q. Q. Yes, it's his Q. And then he's got a very targeted slow, which I don't like. But when someone's like right behind you or right in front of you, you really can't miss. Exactly. And you know what? What's great about Aatrox though, especially let's let's say you have uh, Draven in the top lane backing you up, or you've got Darius in the top lane backing you up. Aatrox goes down. He's got that passive to keep him alive while Darius just cleaves an axe wave right through everything yeah. to keep Aatrox in that game. I'm actually not sure if a Darius alt hitting a Aatrox and his passive would not work against the ultimate of Darius. Like, because he has to get a kill for it to recharge, I believe, right? So you're wondering if the passive, if negates, when he goes down, yeah, that's all, actually yeah. A, a, an interesting experiment that we might need to try. Or, <laughs> alternatively, people Tell watching us. this, if people watching this, do it, do it, take a video of it, or, or even That'd do an cool. experiment, send it to us, and tell us what you got for the results. Yeah, for you that. can put it as a, um, what's the word? Video response. Video response. Alright, uh, who else do we have here? Garen, do we have to talk about Garen? Well, Garen's pretty self-explanatory. I don't see him as a top lane terror, though. I'm sorry. He does not have that early game carry. He does not have that mid game carry. Late game, like if you build him he right, can be scary. Yeah. If, 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 if you build him right for mid game, he could be formidable. But he's not going to be quite as damaging as a Renekton or a Nasus or one of those typical top laners. Yeah. Um, late game, though, definitely a good player can get a Garen that's really scary. That's right. And you got that spin to win all day, baby. <laughs> all I know about Garen is from fighting him, and pretty much Kyle nailed everything about him. So let's move on to Darius, uh, the fourth one in this bundle. I come from the era of, the beautiful era, where Darius' alt recharged on a kill and stayed recharged. I love that. Now, I know that was OP. <sighs> But uh, <laughs> every time we play Darius, you always go back to that. I will always. I remember it. the day when Darius is all recharged. Every time you got a kill, we had pentakills every day. Oh my god! It was like a pentakill feast. It was so good. It was really good. Old I man. mean, it's still the same. It's still the same alt now, except for if a couple people get away, the alt resets, which is fine. I'm okay with it now. Are you really? Because you sound bitter about that. <laughs> I sound bitter. <laughs> it's only because I want it back, but that's all right. All right. Lee Sin. Uh, don't have any experience actually being Lee yes. Sin myself, but I have fought against him. Uh, Tom. Oh, which yes. Which is uh, Stefan's brother there. He is amazing with Lee Sin. He's very good. And I remember going 3v3 with him. I was Diana, and I oh, was scared. Right. Yeah. I was scared. He's so to good. even get anywhere close to him because Lee Sin is just one of those champions that's like, if you know somebody's good as playing Lee Sin, you just stay as far away as you can. And Lee Sin's so good at escaping, too. Um, obviously, he's played in the championships a lot for his ability to place down a sight ward and teleport straight to it to escape. And, of course, also with the release of the new beach skins. Oh, yes. Yeah, he's got his, uh, you've got the... He's holding a coconut pool there. Party, yeah, yeah, the pool party uh, Lee Sin skin that just came out. So, might be a reason to get the pack. What do you think overall about the uh, the top lane terror pack? Though? I really like it. Um, it would force me to get Garion. But uh, I think it would be worth it to get Lee Sin for me, since I own uh, Darius, Jace, and Aatrox. Well, you'd also, yeah, you'd be saving on the Lee Sin as well, because, of exactly. course, the bundles, for those of you who don't know, the bundles are actually uh, priced so that if you own champions, the price of the bundle goes down without compromising the sale price. That's right. We forgot to mention that one. So <laughs> if, say, you own four to five champions in a bundle, you could still get that other champion 
for 25 percent off or whatever the bundle percentage is off that's right which is really handy in the case of oh well this individual champion's on sale but the bundle is and i already own everybody blah 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 they riots figured it all out for you so don't be worried about that and again these bundles are on sale from september 17th to september 24th so the sale ends relatively soon it's the 18th right now yeah so just came on sale the other day make sure that if you're going to get anything you get it soon because we don't know the next time these bundles are going to be coming out they're rather sporadic or if they ever come out again exactly um this past summer, they had released uh, oh. three bundles, I think, for the entire summer. Yeah. Right? Which was really not all that impressive. Yeah. Uh, the other bundles they got going on right now, they got a few... They got the normal bundle, the digital the digital oh, yeah. bundle, and yeah. they also have the champion bundle out yeah. right now as well. Now, the reason why we didn't highlight the digital collector's bundle or the it's champion bundle... Well, digital collector bundle's been there forever, but the champion bundle also has about 20 champions in it. Yeah. And I bought that bundle, and that's what got me the bulk of my champions. <laughs> Um, but the champion bundle, if you are new to League of Legends and you just want to kind of fast track your way through some champions and give yourself an option, definitely get the champion bundle. You're going to be stuck with a few champions that aren't that great. Yeah. But if you're more of a we twisted... We won't mention any. We won't mention any. Scion. <coughs> Scion. <coughs> you do get Mundo, though. Mundo's pretty good. And he does go where he pleases. And he loves who he pleases. <laughs> This is who we love. Anyways, champion bundle is a good bundle. I'm not going to go through the champions with you. There's way too many. But uh, too many. if you're if you're a new if you're new to League of Legends, I suggest picking it up. If you play more Twisted Tree Land than you do Aram, definitely a good pick. If you're more of an Aram guy like we are, yeah. then it might not be such a good idea. Pick and choose your favorites. I'd say if you're yeah, if you're going to do mostly Aram, but Aram is non ranked, and I know a lot of you out there are aspiring championship and aspiring oh. ranked people, so. Go for it. <laughs> yeah, you know what? I think in the end, I'm, I might bite the bullet, depending on the cost, get Garen with IP, and maybe spend well, the RP. With the, we're going to be discussing it later on. The rework of Garen is coming That's up right. soon. He's actually he's on the top of the list for the reworks yeah, the right visual, now. visual updates. Yeah. Well, the visual updates, not to mention they're also overhauling some of his actual Oh, that's well. right. That's right. So, really, when it comes down to it, you're going to be getting Garen as this update comes out. Chances are you're probably not going to be playing him for a little while. Yeah. Because you're going to be so focused on playing Lee Sin that you're just going to be like, <laughs> screw Garen, why do I need to spin to win? Speaking of Lee Sin, I think he's got, like, uh, Dragon Fist Lee Sin is, like, the best skin. Which wasn't included in the Dragon. Oh, yeah, no, what the of heck? Course. That's Mind like, you, if you included Dragon skins of every champion, I'm pretty sure you could. There'd be a lot, yeah. yeah 15 skins or so. Now we're going to go into the patch notes and a little bit of a discussion about... Things that have been changed in the 3.11 patch. Or 3.11. Why say 3.11? Alright, so Draven. Uh, he, for the second time, he's got... Uh, his his passive has been reworked again. It's been tweaked. So now that Draven's passive will consume all stacks of League of Draven to grant bonus gold. Although the gold granted per sec has been reduced by one. Additionally, the passive will grant at least 50 gold per kill, which is huge. That that is a huge deal. I mean, when you look when, when you look at Draven already, I mean, Draven is, is he's one of those centric characters in League of Legends. He's very personable, mm -hmm. very like everybody knows the joke about League of Draven, right? Yes. If you don't, even that new cinematic, the A Twist of Fate. Yeah, there's they, been a, a twist, twist of, of Draven. Draven. Yeah, yeah, which is all Draven, predictably, but. Uh, 50 gold per kill, I mean, when you get a good Draven on the field, you can have a guy who's 20, 30 kills per match, yeah. easily. And he does so much DPS if you get some uh, armor penetration and some crit, oh my gosh. And I mean, like, that's at least 50 gold per kill, that's only one stack of League of Draven, that's not even, you're not even talking about, like, when you stack 3, 4, 5, yeah. like, you're not talking about that bonus gold on top, like, you're getting 50 gold per kill. Not to mention the rewards coming in. You might get, if you kill somebody who's on a on a roll. That's right. You might get that 500 reward. You got 550 gold right there. Yeah, it's pretty intense. Um, I I own Draven. I love Draven. I don't get him that often when I do ARAMs. Um, and I think uh, Matt uh, just bought Draven recently himself. And he is a monster with Draven as well. I, again, I've never, I've played Draven, I think, three times, but every time I've played him, I've always been thoroughly impressed by him as a champion, mm -hmm. so I think this passive is just going to work brilliantly for him. Kudos to you, right? Well, kudos to you, and kind of shame for us if we had to go <laughs> against him. Yeah. Anyways, next one here, uh, they did some notes, they did some changes to uh, Fiora. Her Blade Waltz now allows her to jump to untargetable invisible targets, so like Fizz, Akali, and Teemo will allow her to jump to those champions that are untargetable. 
or invisible. However, it will not allow her to damage untargetable, untargetable or invisible targets. So if you jump to a Teemo, he isn't going to be revealed. Oh my god, that's actually a really good strategy for Teemo. Just stand still, and that Blade Waltz will just keep going around the invisible you standing still. Yeah, but then everybody's going to know there's an invisible you standing there. Yeah, then you're screwed. Then you're screwed. The thing is, though, um, if her Blade Waltz is on the way to you, and you come out of your invisibility, then it's going to do damage to That's you. That's right. But so long as you are untargetable or invisible, she'll just bypass you and use you as a stepping stone. That's right. So kind of like Master Yi. So you got to be careful when strength. running away, too. Exactly. You might be a Fizz who can hop on your trident, but Fiora will hop to your top of your trident. When you go down, she's... Just well, you could go. just bridge that gap closer to your team, unknowingly, and allow that Fiora to get in there. And Fiora is a force to be reckoned with yeah. when she's got her build going. I mean, we've seen Adrian play Fiora before, and he'll just go in there, and he'll double kill, triple kill, quadra kill. Yeah. No problem. He has... I think he made it his personal mission when he got Fiora to become good with her, and he... He really has. Now, I'm just going to say, just before we move on to the next one, voice actress for Fiora, I love you. I love you. I love you. Just talk to me. Call me. I love your voice. Okay, let's move on. <laughs> it's a little bit creepy, but... Uh, she has the best, like, better, French better, accent. Better he says that about Fiora than Garen. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Moving on, Galio. Galio is, once again, relevant. Now, he's got a huge cooldown reduction to his ultimate, as well as a mana reduction. His mana, uh, The mana cost for his ultimate idol of uh, Durand, is it, I think? I'm not sure. Uh, it was 100, 150, 200, but now it's 100 across the board at all levels. It's just a flat mana cost now. Exactly. And the cooldown, I think... He got reduced massively. It was a 50 cooldown reduction, I think. That's right. The first the one, and then 30, and then I think 10. But it, it was, it was, it's one of those things where Galio was slowly becoming outdated as a champion. He was still good, just outdated. Well, he, he was still good as a tank, and he could still kind of hold on a support role, but he was getting to that point where other champions were starting to outgun him, they were starting to outdo him, even as a tank. But now with the cooldown reduction, it'll allow him that ability to kind of keep pushing a little bit harder, a little bit more. Yeah. Uh, moving on, my personal favorite champion, I, I think this yeah. is, of all time, my favorite champion in League is Thresh. He's so cool. Um, I don't mean to brag, but I am pretty decent with Thresh. Don't pretty mean to brag. Decent. Pretty decent. Um, and this actually, this this is funny. You can look at this either way. As a Thresh player, I look at this either way. Mm -hmm. um, they changed him so that his death sentence chain will shatter if the target cleanses the initial spell, yeah. or if they have a spell shield. So there have been times where I've uh, thrown my, my uh, death sentence at Sivir, and it'll still connect and hold there while she's got her spell shield on. Um, this prevents him from using the death leap. That's right. That's right? where you go... Well, QQ, yeah. right? It prevents him from using his death leap. The only... There's two things about it, right? Your Q, your initial Q, does damage on hit. Yeah. So it'll actually dissolve the shield. However, if you get cleansed and there's still a shield on, and you're getting pulled in, you're a one-way trip to hurt Central. Yeah. Because there's there's two ways you can kind of look at it. As a, as a Thresh player, you can either say, okay, well, my chain breaks. I didn't want to get in there anyways because of that spell shield. It didn't do that initial damage that I wanted it to do. Now it's just going to bring me to hurt Central because they've got full health. Yeah. Right? Or, alternatively... This is great. The spell shield didn't work, but she's got low health anyways. Yep. Right? All right, moving on to one of my favorite tanks, Zack. Uh, now, Zack had a pretty lengthy little update, so we just kind of pick, picked and chose the more relevant ones. Uh, so they've made it so that Zack's chunk drops are more, are more contestable when an enemy champion is near Zack. Uh, they reduced the invulnerability time for chunks from 0.75 seconds to 0.25. Honestly, negligible. Honestly, to me, I never really noticed. Like, I noticed that when you walk over them, there's that, like, split-second delay, which I guess they've quantified here for us. But now they've made it almost almost instant, so I don't know who was complaining about this. I, it would have to be somebody probably in a higher-up, like, you got your higher-up rank match guys who are playing yeah. Zach, and they're probably, you know these guys have timed everything right down to the... Right down to the point second of something, yeah. obviously, point two five. Um, I, I also really like um, a quality of life improvement to Zach's alt. When he is bouncing around, his chunk pickup rage has increased, and there is no invulnerability timer at the minute he lands on a chunk 
the minute it's his. So that's a good thing for Zach too, especially because Zach is the kind of person, champion, I wouldn't really call him a person, thing, where he needs to get in and out, kind of, he could tank a little bit, yes. he's definitely a tank, but he needs to He needs to have the ability to get in, deal that damage, pull himself back out. And boy, does he have a way to get in. When you level up that elastic slingshot, every point into it makes it so your jump is further and longer. And no, you told me an interesting story, actually, about an ARAM match that you were discounting oh for my gosh. 10 minutes. Yesterday, um, yesterday I, we had an ARAM match. I was playing with Matt. He rolled Nautilus, and I rolled Zach in ARAM, and my nine-year-old PC was having computer issues. Internet was fine, just everything was not responding. Eventually got into the game, about ten minutes had passed, I think I started off at level seven or eight, and the minute I got in the game, I leaped in, just and got a triple kill. It was grand. It was beautiful. And their whole team was like, where'd Zach come from? A wild Zach has appeared. Pokemon reference. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. It was great. And we actually ended up uh, turning it around and winning that game. And that's, well, that's the beautiful thing about Zach, too, is you do not see him coming sometimes. He just will bounce out of nowhere, and all of a sudden you've got a Zach hopping around your side of the field there. Yeah. Uh, uh, especially Zach on Summoner's Rift. That jungle maneuverability, you can clear the jungle so quick. Okay, so what we've got here is uh, just a few things, map changes mostly, uh, for Twisted Tree Line and... Um, Crystal Scar. Crystal Scar, that's it. So, Sanguine Blade has been changed for both Crystal Scar and Twisted Tree Line. Uh, the recipe changed to Pickaxe plus Vampiric Scepter. This is huge. Plus 500 gold to equal up to a total of 2175 gold for the actual Sanguine Blade. Uh, it makes it more accessible for early and mid game, which is a really good hybrid ADLS item. Um, the thing about Sanguine Blade that was really bad about it before was the cost associated with your BF sword. Your best friend sword. Your best friend sword. I'd argue that it would be something else, maybe related to Doom, but I'm not going <laughs> to say it. Um, again, Sanguine Blade was always designed to kind of be that mid game, yeah. or that, er that, that late early to mid game accessible item that would get you that little bit of boost in ADLS. That's um, right. Obviously, your Ravenous Hydra would be like your late game. Mm -hmm. Your Ravenous Hydra is kind of that thing that you... It's always your go-to. You always want to end with your Ravenous Hydra kind of thing. You know you're in a good position if you can afford the Ravenous Hydra outright. Exactly. A um, few times where we've been in a position like that where we can afford yeah. a Rabbitons or whatever outright. Um, so they fixed that a little bit, kind of changed the recipe a little bit, which is great. Uh, I think it'll benefit everybody. I think it'll make the games go a bit quicker as I well. I think it's about a 600 and something, 650 gold change, so it's about much that, cheaper. Yeah. Easier to access. Uh, now let's move on to some changes with uh, Nidalee and Teemo. Uh, now they have nerfed Nidalee's bushwhack. Now I don't know if people say Nidale, Nidalee, some people we say... We call her Nidalee. Some people say Nidale, I don't know. But I call her Nidalee. Uh, now, her bushwhack, uh, the reveal um, and the shred duration has been reduced from 6 seconds to 12. And the big thing is the trap duration, which was previously 4 minutes, has now been reduced to 2 minutes. Which, it's interesting though, because we, we're going to talk about Teemo's nerf in a second. Oh my god. But You don't want to hear what I have to say about Teemo's nerf. Continue. The thing about Nidalee though, is her traps aren't as good as Teemo's. That's true. Very true. And they still nerfed it to the point where it's worse than Teemo's nerf. <laughs> yes. <I laughs> Are agree. they trying to compensate for her Q? I'm not quite sure. As far as I know, the whole point, or at least the way I've been using Bushwhack, is... Well, like we say, we play a lot of ARAM. I litter the bushes... Well, it's with, a sight ward. With, and all. It's a sight ward on the champions who walk over them. And as Nidalee, you just... You're like, oh, hey, there's a person there. Throw your spear. Well, because you also got that magic. You got that magic because this is armor. Uh, sorry, that armor penetration, that magic pen right off the mm -hmm. bush trap there, right? So that works out relatively well. Uh, moving on to the Teemo ah. deal here. I actually we should add out here that the Teemo and the Nidalee nerfs are only for Twisted Tree Line. Twi Twisted, Twisted Tree Line. <laughs> Twisted Tree Line and Crystal Spire. Scar. Scar. Close Spire. Whatever. I never, I never sounds pretty cool. I never play it. <laughs> That's right. I never play Crystal Scar. Um, Timo has actually his noxious traps have been reduced from ten minutes. Okay, wait for this. Ten minutes. Ten minutes to three minutes. WTF? Come on. Okay. Now, WTF? Right. We know. We know in Twisted Tree Line that Timo loves to just mushroom the jungle until it is full. 
It's it's kind of beautiful. It's lit up like a Christmas tree. Well, they do that for for several reasons. Sight wards for one. That's right. And for two, you've got a guy who goes for that early blue buff, gets away with no health, walks into a mushroom. Yeah. Right. Oh, look at that! You just got killed by a Teemo. Tra -la 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 -la. Mm -hmm. So really, by nerfing that, I, I, I mean, I'm kind of I'm an anti Teemo kind of guy. Don't play them. Don't like them. Hate being against them. <laughs> so I, I think this is a beautiful nerf. I, I mean, I'm, I'm laughing right, right. all the way to the bank here. I am just happy that this does not um, attribute itself to Summoner's Rift. Because I'm glad they still got that 10-minute uh, Summoner's Rift. I think 10 minutes in ARAM is still a thing. I'm not sure. It Well, ARAM is Howling Abyss. So it's still Murder Bridge. The Murder Bridge. Sometimes they call it the Murder Bridge. The thing is, uh, Twisted Tree Line and Howling Abyss are smaller, more linear maps. You yeah. don't need a 10-minute mushroom there. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's true. You don't need it. Um, but I like it being there. You just like having a mushroom sitting in some random bush for 10 minutes? Sometimes. <laughs> some, let's move along. Okay. Now, a really awesome change that we've been asking for for years is the undo button on the shop. Yay! Yay! We're really enthusiastic about this. No, no, um, the, the undo button is, is just the most fantastic thing you could ever do, especially when you're doing, like, an ARAM match. I'm sorry, ARAM is the ultimate. You pick your item and you pick it wrong, you are screwed. Yeah, you leave that little uh, pedestal and you cannot purchase again. So it is It is the... It, it, it saved my hide more than once in ARAM. Dozens of already. times. Already. Uh, so... A little more information on this. Uh, undo history is cleared under certain events, such as leaving the shopping area, dealing damage, receiving damage, or casting a spell. The items will remove benefits uh, they have granted to you, so you can just imagine anything that is an aura, etc. Uh, certain items can't be undone, such as home guard or captain's boot enchantments. Which, if, if honestly, you get to that point, yeah, why? I mean, like. You, there's in ARAM you only have a uh, choice between four of the enchants anyway. So. Yeah, but I mean when you're doing like a, a like a summoner rift game and you you get to your home guard yeah. enchantment by that point you're basically like I think you know I've got doing. my full build. Yeah, you can afford to get just sell the boots, buy them again. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, some general fixes we got here. Not we're not liking this because we did a lot of training in, in custom games. In custom games. Um, and it was it was nice to even get a little bit of IP from them, but what they've now done is they basically uh, said that there's a minimum number of human players that have to participate in a custom game to receive IP or XP awards. So you'd have five five player characters minimum in a Summoner's Rift, a Crystal Scar, or a Howling Abyss yeah. to actually get anything anything back from it. Uh, you need to have three players minimum for your Twisted Tree line. And basically, they also, just to just kind of add insult to injury, they add a no notification at the end of the game. This is why you haven't you yeah. got any IP. This is why you didn't get any IP, because you didn't have enough people, sucker. Yeah, not a big fan of this. Um, even when I was playing by myself, I, when I wanted to learn champions, I wanted one-on-one -on -one or... Uh, even 1v2, just like testing things out, even though if you do 1v2, you get nothing anyway, but... Um, doing it like, I would have maybe 2v2, you know what I mean? Yeah. And have, w watch as the Annie bot goes top and I'm against two people at the bottom just to test them out. Or even when we did our, uh, we'd have our 4 versus 5 or, or yeah. 3 versus 5 when, when uh, you, me, and Matt would go training. Yeah. And we'd, uh, we'd have two NPCs on our team. Yeah, they which, which we never rely on them because it really is 3v5 with... A little support. Exactly. And the fact that they're eliminating any IP reward at all. I mean, even a small... We we only got small IP rewards for I custom I mean, like, games. what, the highest you got was, like, 92, 86. Yeah, exactly. So, and that's with a ton of kills. So. And, and, and really, when you think about it, the loss of that IP just makes it all the more reason to not really even do it anymore yeah. for some people. I mean, we'll still use it to train, but it's going to kind of be more of a time waste now than anything else. Yeah, now we have to make sure there's at least three of us, and then when there are three of us, we have to be on Twisted Dream. Exactly. Then. Moving on here, we're going to go take a look at our champion spotlights. Mike, we're going to start us off with you here. Oh, You've yeah. got... What did you choose? Who did you choose as your champion to spotlight today? All right, so um, every week Kyle and I are gonna pick a champion, and we're just gonna give you a little bit more information about them, why we love playing them, etc., etc. Some item synergies. 
I chose Blitzcrank. I love Blitzcrank. Um, what are your thoughts on Blitzcrank? Blitzcrank is a he's a love hate relationship with me. I <laughs> like I say that about a lot of champions. You love it when I'm playing him on your team. Hate it when I'm playing. <laughs> uh, the thing with Blitzcrank is I, I'm not bad with him. I'm not bad with him. But he's he's one of those champions that is just not my play style. Yeah. I mean, you look at uh, you look at Blitzcrank and you look at Thresh, right? Thresh is by far my favorite champion in the league. Very similar champion to Blitzcrank in the terms of he grabs, he pulls, etc. Yes. But Thresh is a more forward attacking champion. He's yeah. more direct than Blitzcrank. Blitzcrank pulls, st- he pulls, shocks, and does all of his things, and can get some kills off of it. But I just don't have that personality with Blitzcrank that I do with Thresh, and for that, I just don't like him. That's um, but that's okay. Um, I am a huge fan of Blitzcrank. Uh, as everyone knows, a good Blitzcrank can really change the game, um, and especially in Summoner's Rift. You have so many cool options to shoot from the shroud over the jungle and totally mess up someone's lane. Um, not that uh, Blitzcrank is usually a jungler, but a surprise Blitzcrank attack can really mess up the other team and get a good start for your team. Uh, so we're going to quickly go over his skills and his passives and all that, or his passive and his skills. So his passive is Mana Barrier. When his health gets below um, a certain point, he gets a percentage of his mana cost as a shield. And this has saved me more times than not. Um, it synergizes well with good items like um, a Frozen Heart, Athenes on Holy Grail, etc., etc. You're going to be hearing a lot about Athenes on Holy Grail. Well, I mean, that's the name of the podcast, right? So, uh, now, signature move Blitzcrank has is the Rocket Grab. I mean, what can we say about this? It's pretty self-explanatory. He basically power fists somebody up the rear and drags them to him. Yeah, you, you just aim, shoot, pull them to you. Your team descends upon that one victim. Then you guys can go back to your tower, wait for the Rocket Grab, grab the next one. But it's pretty systematic. Now, can he pull through the jungle? Yes, he can pull through the jungle, but you always got to watch out for minions or jungle mobs because the rocket grab will pick them up. Although, they have changed it that... I think back in the day, rocket grab could grab Teemo's mushrooms. Rocket grab could grab the dragon. Oh, it that was, would be... Yeah. A Teemo, grabbing a Teemo mushroom, because what's worse than running into one? <laughs> grabbing one, <laughs> pulling it to your team, exploding on everyone. Alright, uh, this second move is Overdrive. Increases movement speed and attack speed. Very good escape. Very good catch-up. Um, which leads into his next move, which is the Power Fist. Otherwise, you would call it the Fist Bump. I called it the Fist Bump when we were trying to figure out what his skills were without me looking. Um, <laughs> so, the Power Fist is a just straight-up knock-up. It is great. Um, my combination of moves would be I use overdrive to get into the position to fire a rocket grab, pull them in, and then have the power fist ready, knock them up, static field as they come down and as their team is kind of coming close to defend him, and then hopefully rely on your team to come in and... Well, that's the thing. I mean, a blitz crank that's well built can take... Oh, a yeah. champion out. Oh, yeah. Um, when, you, when you grab hold of an ADC, like say you grab a hold of Ash... As yep. a Blitzcrank, you can just tear her apart. Mm-hmm. That static field will just completely wipe her out. She'll have no magic resist. And also, uh, I don't know if I mentioned this, that the static field, which is Blitzcrank's ult, silences anyone around it. Which just makes that even that much more deadly, especially if you're dragging in a melee champion. Yeah, and, and another cool thing is if you don't want to use your ult, it's got a passive of its own that a little spark of electricity will come down and do a good amount of damage. I think it's 200. Which it's a is, decent, which is pretty decent, decent amount, yeah. All right, so uh, so some item synergies we talked about: the Frozen Heart that gives a lot of mana, armor, Athenes on Holy Grail, uh, ability power, <laughs> cooldown reduction, uh, mana per five. W- what am I missing here? Uh, it's got ability a, power. Ability power. Yeah. It's great. The Athenes on Holy Grail I find is 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 one of those items that you can apply to almost any champion across the board. Even if they don't use mana, you can probably still find a use for it. Every, yeah, like uh, we were talking, we were debating earlier. It's like, well, you can't have it on this person. You can't have it on this person. And Kyle's like, well, you could, and it would work this way. It was pretty good. 
Uh, so some other items. Now these items are, are all dependent on who you're fighting. So uh, if you need some magic resist, Abyssal Scepter, really good. Really good passive on it as well. If you're up against an uh, attack damage heavy team, Zanya's Hourglass. Once again, they both have very good passives. The Abyssal Scepter having a magic resist aura, or no, sorry, magic penetration aura, and Zanya's being the invulnerable for two seconds. Really good. Now, we've talked about this before. I'm going to talk about my champion now. Now, we had, she's a free to play this week. Who could it be? Who could it be? Um, again, my favorite support for. Pretty much all of League, mm -hmm. the exception of Soraka. <laughs> all of League, except, except one. Except one. Is Karma. Um, a lot of people are actually very confused about how to play Karma. Mm -hmm. I actually even recently saw a, uh, a post or a comment on Riot's free, um, their free rotation champion oh, thing. Right. Yeah. And it basically said, why don't you fix Karma? She sucks. Yeah. And I just sit there and I go, noob. No, wait a second. Karma's really good. Yes. There, there's a lot of people who don't... I, I was one of those people who didn't know how to play Karma when I first started playing her, but you really quickly fall into the synergy of playing Karma. And, and she's very... She's one of those champions that has two sides to her. Mm -hmm. uh, you can play her damagey, or you can play her support. I like support. Um, again, I'm a support guy, same with Mike here. The thing about playing damagey Karma is that you're really relying on your two skills. You're relying on your Q, which is your, uh, your inner flame, and you're relying on your uh, focused resolve which is basically your beam. Kind That's of right. similar to Fiddlesticks. Um, however, would be her being damaging, you would have to commit, which puts you into the line of a lot of things that you might not want to get into. Um, as a support champion, I think she is absolutely amazing. Her Gathering Fire is her uh, passive, and it reduces her cooldown when she uses an ability on an enemy. So oh, cool. I use my Q, reduces the cooldown on that Q. Right? Yeah. Even if I'm not using anything... If I'm just normally attacking with my regular bolts, I'll still get half cooldown reduction. <laughs> so, already without Nathine's Unholy Grail, mm -hmm. I've got my cooldown reduction set. Uh, her Inner Flame is uh, is pretty straightforward. It's a bolt, Q, deals damage. Uh, the cool thing about this is I found out in ARAM, if you put two points into your Q, one into your shield when you first start, you're going to have an, um, like a really good poke going on early game. Yeah. Because you're not going to have... You don't usually have those big team battles until about level 5, level 6. Mm -hmm. Usually it's if a lot like of poking. <laughs> well, usually it's a lot of poking back and forth, yeah, depending is, yeah. on the champion synergy, right? But that inner the, the, the inner flame can actually create a lot of distance between you and other champions. So I build into that always early. Um, focused Resolve, obviously I had mentioned before, the beam. Yep. Um, and then you've got Inspire, which is probably awesome. my favorite my favorite ability of Karma's. Which she shields an ally and deals AOE damage to nearby enemy champions. Mm -hmm. um, her alt is actually a really interesting. It's it's more like a passive than it is anything else. Now really. you start with your alt, right? You start. You always start with your alt with Karma, which is really cool because it can make your Q immensely powerful in an early game. Because your mantra, what it does is your alt uh, will allow you to unlock, I guess, a certain ability. Or a secondary ability to your uh, to your actual abilities. Yeah. Um, so your inner flame it increases your damage and creates a cataclysm, kind of like brand. So yes. it'll hit the enemy and then it'll actually create a cataclysm. The uh, focus resolve, what that does, that gives you bonus damage and it heals you. In addition to the rooting of the the original. I forgot about that. Forgot that it heals you. It does. That's that's actually a good way for karma if you if you're playing a close support. You get in there while, say, you're playing a Blitz, I'm playing a Karma, right? Or anybody's playing a tank. They focus on the tank, you walk in there, you pop off your W. Not only does it heal you, but it also will root them at the end of your W. Which is pretty darn good. Which is really good. Um, your Focus Resolve is, or sorry, your Inspire, um, your Shield on your Mantra Alt. What that basically does is it shields everybody in a radius around your team. So assuming they're all your team's bunched together, it'll shield all of them and give them a speed buff. Yeah. Now, the cool part about this is when you're getting into team battles, and this this is why Karma is my all-time favorite champion, when you get into a team battle with Karma and you pop off that alt, 
that mantra with the uh, with the inspire. You shield all your allies as they walk into a team fight. The shield also commits to AOE damage. And that's and and hopefully that would be five different sets of AOE damage. Exactly, because each shield counts as independent. So really, when you think about it, Karma as a support can hold her team together. Mm -hmm. She may not be able to heal, and she may not be able to do that much damage in the end game. But what she lacks in damage and what she lacks in healing, she makes up for just raw support as a champion. I mean, we went to uh, an ARAM game. Yep. And I had I had mentioned this maybe earlier on the podcast where I had 35 assists at the end, and I was three and three, so I had a zero KD ratio going on, which let's eh. to be honest, meh, right? As Fiora might say, c'est la vie, c'est la vie, but. At the same time, my supporting is what allowed us to advance up those towers in that ARAM match because I was shielding us and speeding us up. They'd see us at one point, oh, look, they're they're over here. All of a sudden, bam, AOE's up, mm -hmm. bam, speed's up, and then we're closing that gap it, before it, they can even react. And if anyone looks on their summoner profile, when you look under the takedown section, it's not just kills. It's it is kills, assists. towers, and assists. So for someone who might have 21 kills, 4 deaths, 3 assists, and then Kyle comes along, 0 kills, maybe 4 deaths, 35 assists, he's going to get a higher score than the person who got the most kills on the team. At the end of the day, so, well, I mean, that's the thing. is Another thing I want to kind of talk about and touch base with is just supports do not get the credit they deserve. The Unfortunately, no. they don't get the recognition. It's, it's really hard playing in Summoner's Rift or Twisted for like right, a support yeah. character because... You don't get that gold, that gold value back mm -mm. in assists. You don't. You, you're not accumulating the wealth like you would, say, an ADC or a Bruiser, mm -hmm. right? Which is really why it falls on the ADC in the bottom lane. If you're supporting an ADC in the bottom lane, to let you get those minion kills, so you can keep getting that influx in. So, what kind of items would you use then? Uh, with Karma, I would use uh, obviously Nathine's on Holy Grail. I mean, yeah. she she is a mana based champion. Uh, not only that, it gives you a good starting base as well. Mm -hmm. gives you that nice cooldown reduction so you can keep tossing out those pokes. Uh, it allows you to kind of keep just moving on because she is a bit of a mana hog up to a certain point. Uh, Shard of True Ice is something I always get with a support character. Yeah, uh, definitely. Has Karma a, or whoever. The gold uh, gold per five, right? It's gold per five, yep. And it's just, it, it's an overall gives you ability 45, I think it's 45 ability power mm -hmm. uh, off the bat plus the gold per five. Which is really nice to have. Uh, Rabadon's Death Cap, always a must. It might not give you what you'd expect from a support, but as I said, her Q has that damage potential to go a long way. Mm -hmm. You get that Rabadon's Death Cap. If they're not stacking magic resistance, your Q can actually make the difference between one of them getting away or one of them getting you getting a kill. Uh, another thing I would get, same with uh, Mike here on Blitz, Abyssal Scepter. Oh, yeah. Got that magic resistance there. You still get that boost of AP. It's an overall nice item to have. That magic penetration in a team fight, especially if you have a Vigar behind you, a Victor, it's really good. Exactly. Just it's it's an all around good item to have. I mean, our our builds are not too different. No. Um, being that we both are technically support champions, hmm. but at the same time, Karma is one of those champions where you can go pure AP with her, kind of like Soraka. You could go pure AP with Soraka, or you can opt for a more tanky version of yeah right and stack that armor stack that magic resistance and stack all the static buffs for your team uh, depending on how you want to play your support a funny little story i have um every time i play lulu i never tell my team how i'm gonna build and i always build lulu as i probably build vigar i know it's a support but i'm always going for the damage in there i feel like uh the more ability power she has the higher her shield is and the amount of damage that Glitter Lance will do is just so high. Well, it's it's also about, as a support, being able to kind of support your team on more levels than just being there. Mm -hmm. You need to be able to commit to doing some damage. Yeah, without kill stealing. Exactly. And I mean, that's the thing. As I said about Karma, that Q can be the difference between somebody getting away or mm -hmm. somebody getting killed, right? Uh, it can also be the difference between your teammate getting a kill and yeah. not getting a kill where it's been the case for me many times, where I've gotten that Q in, and it's that difference between my teammate just getting that extra little bit in. Yeah. Right? So that's as, as a support, that's kind of your role at the end of the day. Yeah, so um, this has pretty much been... Uh, our champions have been both pretty support-like. I know with the recent change to um, which characters are ADCs, which characters are tanks, Blitzcrank has moved from support and tank now to tank and fighter. 
and I'm pretty sure Soraka is still it, or not Soraka uh, Karma is still in the support category. Well, I mean, it makes sense. Blitzcrank is more he's more suited tanky. to yeah. fighting and and kind of getting in there. Uh, Karma's pretty delicate <laughs> in the sense of everything yeah. saying so. In so few words, she's delicate. All right, so now we're going to move on to the season three tier rewards. Uh, we're going to start with bronze. When you, if you're in the ranked leagues and you have a bronze icon, you will earn a summoner icon that displays accomplishments, which is a different icon for each tier. So obviously, that being said, different tier is going to get different icons. Silver will have a different icon. Gold's going to have a different icon. If you do have silver, aside from getting the icon. You're also going to be getting a banner to your loading screen. Um, silver hire is going to earn a corresponding trim, so each tier has a different colored trim. So bronze is going to have bronze tier colored trim, silver silver trim, gold probably gold trim. I would guess. Yeah. Uh, silver tier, you're going to pick up a new permanent victorious ward skin to light up the jungle. So if you play support, you get a lot of wards. You're going to have a new fancy ward skin that says, "Hey, look at me! I play a lot more leagues than I probably should." Now I really hope that if they've done this right. That the ward skin will be a forever ward skin, because when they implemented ward skins, I think uh, last Halloween, they were like for two weeks. I remember that, yeah. yeah. And I really was not a fan of that at all. So let's move on to what the gold rewards are going to be. So if you make it all the way to gold, you will greet your new friends and teammates with a personalized invitation badge that shows off your success in shiny style, which will be unique to your tier. Uh, you'll also earn the vic. The permanent Victorious Ward skin. Oh, there you go. There's the answer to that yeah. one. So I guess Silver doesn't get the permanent one. <laughs> and, a unique, and a unique Victorious skin, which they've teased a face, which I think the internet and everyone thinks is Elise. Yeah, that's all I can really think of. And I can't wait to see the full skin because it's just the head. I imagine it would be... I don't know why, but I want to say it's going to be something similar to another skin that we've seen before because yeah. Thresh is getting a championship skin. Yes. Uh, now Jana was last year's Victoria skin and it was it was pretty good. It wasn't my favorite. Um, I recently picked up Forecast Jana. Uh, woo. <laughs> um, but I, I'm very excited to see Victorious Elise's spider form. If it's even Elise. If it's Elise, which a lot of people thinking it is, so Mind you, we also thought Lucian was going to come out two weeks after he was teased. That's right, but... <laughs> Speaking of Lucian, though, <laughs> um, we got uh, Lucian and Thresh and the lore that is combined within. Now, me and Mike love the lore of League of Legends. Yeah, our friends not so much. Our friends not so much, but me and Mike could literally go through... I think we actually have gone through the majority of profiles. We've had multiple nights over the summer where, over Skype, we... We just stopped talking, and it's like, have you read this character's lore? I don't know, I'm, I actually just finished reading Phil 6. You go read this one, and I'll go read this one. <laughs> the lore, it's actually, it's funny, because I was reading online about the Lucian Thresh and lore, reading an actual a Riot interview with the devs, um, and they had said that uh, the actual lore itself is uh, it's so deeply integrated. Like They actually have a story, like a guy for stories. They have a guy that, that is purposely there to create storylines so that they don't screw anything up and step on somebody's feet. Uh, and I really like the idea of champions crossing over in each other's lores. Exactly. Well, I mean, like we had this idea with uh, Lucian and Thresh, right? Mm -hmm. It's funny, because Lucian and Thresh were actually conceptualized at the same time. Uh, Lucian and Thresh kind of came to be around the same time last year, and Lucian was what we saw out of it. Or not Lucian, sorry. Thresh was what we saw out of that. And uh, no, nothing was ever really revealed about Thresh other than he was from the Shadow Isles and he yeah. was the Warden and now he's dead and he keeps the souls of those that he tortured, etc., etc. He's got a lantern and swings it around. and <laughs> Yeah. He's also got his deep terror skin. Don't know what the story behind that one is, but... Yeah, I wish... Sometimes... Uh, we were talking about this earlier. I wish there were... Uh, the abilities would change with the skin, I think. Would, would be a neat idea, yeah. It would, it would be a neat idea indeed, I believe. But Lucian uh, came out, he was announced a couple of months ago, uh, actually announced a couple of months ago, and um, me and Mike sat here and we're like, <laughs> oh, a new ADC, new champion's been released, we'll save up for it. We almost got to the point where we felt like we were waiting for the next Game of Thrones to be released. I, I feel Kyle had... Close to twenty seven hundred RP saved, or no, sorry, twenty seven thousand IP saved, and I I must have gotten up to about eighteen nineteen thousand. 
Um, but I kept spending mine. I was like, well, maybe if I get... Well, I bought two 6300s, and then yeah. I still had time to save up for Lucian. It's like, they announce him, and then they say, well, hey, we're just going to make you wait. Sit on this for a little while. And they kept him in PvE for the longest time working on him. Yeah. And it was annoying, but I'm glad the final product of Lucian is actually really good. Yes. Uh, he's really well balanced. I, I I don't see too much of, a, of an issue with him. Mm -hmm. His ult is not as overpowered as some people make it seem. His yeah. ult is actually incredibly tricky to play off really well. Mm -hmm. um, but again, Lu Lucian took forever to came out, come out, mm -hmm. and it was such a waiting game. But with <laughs> his, the the lore that ties in with Thresh, though, is actually really cool. It's in really that good. Lucian. Uh, his lore basically is that uh, his wife Senna yeah. was deceived by Thresh, and he captured her soul in this lantern. Now there is a there is a theory on the internet going around that the left altar in oh, Twisted Treeline right. yeah. is Senna. I really. But if like it is, that. if it is, that means that Senna has to tie up with Mordekaiser. Yes, which would make sense because Mordekaiser technically is the Lord of the Shadow Isles. Yeah. Why he hasn't been mentioned in Thresh's <laughs> lore, or... He might get a lore update, who knows. Hope he does. I hope he does, because he seems like such an intrinsic part of the actual Shadow Isles. Yeah. Uh, but again, Lucian fits in with Thresh in that sense of the lore, and it's really cool. And the, the actual dev questions that were going around, they actually asked, uh, why do Thresh and Lucian lane so well together? <laughs> right? Like, you would think that two champions of opposing lore might not get a well too well in the same lane, but they actually laid together very, very well. Me and Mike tested it out, mm -hmm. and we had amazing results with yes. Lucian and Thresh yes, in the same lane. Did. And uh, one of the questions to the devs in this in this thread I was reading was, well, what's it like for Lucian and Thresh to lane together? And the response from the dev was just awkward. <laughs> I imagine he captured his wife in a That's true. little lantern thing. I mean, if you were if if anyone were to RP. League of Legends, I think it'd be almost near impossible. Pro well, there's just so many damn lore, and uh, like, the whole thing too is half the lore is feels unfinished at this point. Mm -hmm. It feels very fragmented. Um, I would really love to see. Speaking of like a twist of fate, that, yes. uh, that uh, CG thing that came out, I would really love to see a uh, more lore-based version of that. Oh, that'd be great. Where they just included two or three characters and not a bunch. Like I would love to see just like a five-minute backstory of Katarina Garen. Or and an interesting thing in Twist of Fate, Trindomir had a skin. It was his Demon Blade skin. Yep. Which I'm not sure why they chose to make him have that. I I think it helped with his to convey his ultimate. If Trindomir is a demon, it's easier to believe that he survived a sword attack through his heart or through his chest. I wonder if they thought of that after or before. Uh, yeah, that's interesting <laughs> to think. Yeah. Well, it's it's cool because actually, if you're if you pay attention to the CG, you'll notice that. Um, his sword actually breathes in the animation. And the eye blinks. And the eye yeah. blinks. I was like, oh, that's some Soul Calibur shit right there. <laughs> oh, what is the... I can't remember that sword. What is it called? Demon Edge or something? Uh, something. I, I have no clue. If you know, comment, but... Tell me. Tell tell Mike what it is. All right, so moving on. The Garen visual update rework. Why Garen? Why now, Kyle? Well, we know Garen is a cheap champion. 450. He's not expensive by any means. And he's a low risk, high reward character. Yep. Uh, let, let's be honest. He's his learning curve is not that hard. I know. I really just gotta buy him and play. Just, him. just just do it, Mike. Just play him. But his learning curve is not that hard, and he's a decent champion. He's not as bad as people make him to be. He's not amazing, no. but he's not bad. And I mean, he's up there with Sivir for the rework. We know Sivir's coming. We've already seen the rework for. We've already seen actual skins, and re and, and we've already seen the skin for the redone Garen. Yeah. Uh, we know that they're going to be changing his abilities just a tiny little bit. So, at the end of the day, really, the Garen rework is better for everybody, because Garen is still a played champion. He's not like Scion, where, basically, let's face it, Scion. you only choose him if you roll him in ARAM. And at which point you're saying, why don't I have rerolls? I mean, we've seen very few good Scions, but... Most often, Scion is not good. Well, it's just he's an outdated champion. But Garen is still used quite a lot. It's kind of like Master Yi. Right? Oh, yeah. Master Yi was a preferred rework simply because he's used often. He's a low-risk, high-reward character. Yeah. The devs want to pump that out because they know that's the changes that people want to see. They want to see those changes right off the bat. Mm-hmm. I agree. 
So, I mean, in terms, the equivocal, the, the whole thing with the visual update reworks, and you got to keep this in mind, Riot's going to do it by how much the champion's played, by how popular that champion is. Mm-hmm. Garen is a huge part of League of Legends, always has been, and he's kind of their flagship in a sense. Yeah, um, I mean, when you put a face to Demacia, it's, it's Garen. Garen. When, well, sometimes people say uh, Jarvan. Jarvan, but whatever, a lot of people see Garen. Um, His cataclysm's really selfish. <laughs> yeah. All right, so uh, do, should we move on? Yeah, let's let's All go right. to the next one so here. So let's move on to a very interesting thing that we've been pretty psyched about from when we first saw it. The the new champion, the Elemental Thunder Dragon dude, dude man, man guy, guy thing. thing. But his name's Ocean. Ocean. So um, I just call him Ocean. <laughs> that works. That that does work. Or, or you could ow my shin. I, I don't know. All right, so let's let's talk AP or AD. Uh, you know what? Melee or ranged? Well, you could look at two ways. It could be an ADC, mm-hmm. which I find highly unlikely. Yeah. He's going to be an ADC. Uh, he could turn out to be like Shivana. Could. Uh, I mean, you, you've seen his concept art. Yeah. And you've seen the uh, the concept art for his attacks and for his abilities. So it's very possible he could be a uh, a bruiser like Shivana. Mm-hmm. Um, he could be that guy. He could be kind of that gap closer. He could also be an AP melee or an AP support. Yeah. Uh, I can't see him being anything other than an AP melee or an AP support, though. I think I'd like to see him as an AP support ranged. I think I'd love to see that. See, that's the thing, though, is, is we've seen in the concept art his ability with his tail. Yes, um, and we're not sure if that's defensive or, o- or offensive. Well, I'm assuming if it's anything like Pokemon, <laughs> it's probably going to be offensive. Thundertail. Thundertail, Thundertail, Thundertail. Kind of like Star Call. But <laughs> the thing is, like, I, I look at that and I kind of see him as... He's got two actual attacks that look close-ranged. Yep. With the tail, then he's got the electric breath thing going on. And then he's got another ability that kind of a shroud a little bit of mystery, where he shoots out a cloud and it rains. Oh, that's right, yeah. So I'm thinking that maybe, kind of like Rise... His thunderbolt that comes out of his mouth might be a short. His mouth might be a short distance. Yeah. Uh, his tail might be a pure melee. Yeah. And that shower thing might be a either AOE, like an yeah, AOE it slow, an AOE, yeah. or it might be a targeted slow. Maybe. Now, uh, should we talk about the ult? The ult looks. It looks eerily like Janos. It, it, it looks rather. It's gonna be one of two things. One, it's gonna be rather. Super powered Janna Whirlwind with electricity storm in there, going probably a bigger radius going down. Or I'm thinking he is the tornado. Well, that's that's what I'm aiming for as well. And, I think and he, probably he is goes the in with it maybe, and then maybe maybe like a Anivia's Q when it reaches the end, it can do like an explosion of electricity. Who knows? Yeah, maybe. Um, I think personally, it's just what I hope to see from that. Yeah. And, and I think this would separate him from other champions, is that when he activates his ult, he becomes a part of that tornado. But what it does, instead of what Janna's does, which is push people up or knock them up, right, it right. pulls them in. Kind of like Orianna's ult? Kind of like Orianna's ult, but what Except it will a do, moving one, sort of. It will move. Oh, and bring all the people and along. And bring all the people along. So, say, you control it. Oh, that'd be great. Right? Activate your ult, move in, sweep up the team, bring them bring back. back. Oh, that's nice. And at the same time, dealing that damage from that electricity. I think that would be a really neat ult. I like it. Kyle? Which okay. can be blocked, say, can be neutralized. You can join or... right right now. <laughs> Just saying. But look at it two ways, right? You can look at it uh, as his ult, like Janna. You even mentioned Kennen earlier on. You had it mentioned him. Yeah. But, uh, I mean, hey, the sky's the limit with him. I mean, his concept art is really neat. And I think, as a champion... He's going to be one of those, one of those champions that everybody's going to want to get their hands on just to try. He seems very, he seems very unique in the sense of his actual lore and character type. And I think, because we had talked about lore earlier, and it says actually about his lore that Aushin is a powerful storm dragon and a guardian, a guardian of the natural world, and that legend holds that when Ionia faces its greatest crisis. Aushin will descend from the sky. So Slink's telling me that in the lore, something is going to happen mm-hmm. with Ionia to have him come down. 
Now, we know the Darkened Blades yes. are coming. Yep. I think there's five of them, right? There's, I believe, either four or five total or Darkened four, Blades. Four others besides Atrox. I am apt to believe that the introduction of the Darkened Blades, because they are warmongers, I guess, they're, they're, they're ancient warriors that excelled in combat, I'm apt to believe that somehow Aatrox and the Darkened Blades are going to tie in with Ionia and basically with how Ao Shin is connected to it all. Yeah. Because we've already got this separate storyline going with Lucian and Thresh and the Shadow Isles, Mordekaiser, etc. Hecarim, etc., etc., etc. But we haven't really heard a lot from Ionia. We haven't heard a no. lot from, from, from that section yeah. there. And to be honest, I want more Mount Targon. Just, just going to throw it out there, but more Mount Targon, please. But I, I think I, I think that the Dark and Blades are going to have something to do with that. I mean, I hope so. We um, can we can look forward to seeing more. I don't think they're going to stop with just Aatrox. I think they will at this point because they've introduced in the lore there is four or five other Dark and Blades. They're going to have to bring them out. And I think it'll be very interesting. I'm wondering. I'm curious. They're all called Dark and Blades, but I'm wondering if they'll have all darkened weapons. You know, all forged with whatever. Uh, possibly, or they could represent different archetypes maybe exactly yeah either way uh we would like to actually hear from you guys about what you think about Ao Shin, yeah. uh what you think about his lore what you think is going to happen with him what do you think his abilities are going to be and where do you think riot is going with all of this yeah do you think we're completely wrong do you think we're right do you want to take some of our ideas make them better tell us do you have your own ideas tell us do you have your own mind pretty <laughs> sure they do otherwise they wouldn't be watching us Listening, watching, whatever. Watching, listening, same thing. So anyways, feel free to message us. Yes, at, message uh, us. Either one of our respective channels here that we're going to be putting the video up on. Yeah, I'm on Shadow Slayer X. And I am at Great Big Media. Yeah, so uh, definitely send us messages. We will respond to as many as we can, if not all of them. And we will aim to actually feature you guys writing in. On yeah, the show, definitely. we will try to answer your questions. We will try to uh, include you. If you guys have any interesting clips or videos that you want to share with us of your league matches, we do spectating. Oh, we love spectating. And uh, we would love to actually uh, do play-by-play -play for you guys. So if you think that you got some video that is worthy, you got some really cool like penta kills going on, or you got some really funny play happening, or even you and your buddies did a funny video or whatever, send it to us. If we like it, we'll put it in the video and we'll give a shout out to you. Yeah, and you know what? Even if you're one of those guys who gets a quadra kill, then an ace, it's an unofficial pentakill, we will take it. We love unofficial pentakills, it's kind of our motto. Yeah, I mean, I think, like, we, the three of us, Matt, Kyle, and I are, like, kings of unofficial pentakills. Yeah, we, we can never get that last one in time. Kind of sucks. I've actually started making a list of who I've got pentakills with, and who I should have had pentakills with. And let me guess one less larger than the other? Uh, yeah. <laughs> I think I've only got, uh, and I'm counting right now, um, since all we do is play Aram against other people, so I'm counting Aram Pentacles, so I've, I think I have three or four right now, with three or four different champions, I'm talking. There you go, see? You guys get Pentacles, Quadra Kills, unofficial Pentas, send them to us, we'll review them, put them on the show if we can. We love to see stuff from you guys, I mean, to us, it's all the community, we're not getting paid for it. And we're hopefully, uh... Hopefully, want to get some guests. What, rather, what, uh, rather our friends, or maybe some of you guys. You want to be on the show? Let us know. Questions, comments, put them below. Again, I'm Kyle, and I'm Mike. 